Hey everybody, right. welcome back to another episode of the Cantina Club. Different yeah. kind of episode this week. It's been a while since we've done any uh, Cloud City Rancor Pit episode or, or moments in our episode. So we're actually going to do an entire episode dedicated just to a lot of the shows <laughs> we've been watching over the past year. Um, and and I, gotta explain, I have to explain the rating system here again because we've kind of gotten a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, instead of just Cloud City Rancor Pit, what we've got now is a four-tiered uh, rank, rank, ranking system. And it's uh, Cloud City for what we really like. That's at the top. Then we've got Rancor Pit, which is stuff we really didn't care for. <laughs> then next, we've got Carbon Freeze. Now, that's just something we're just kind of eh, in the middle about. It's had some good stuff, had some bad stuff. Don't really love it or hate it. And then finally, we've got the Sarlacc Pit, which is basically material that deserves to be digested over a thousand years very slowly. <laughs> so <laughs> By something else besides yes. us. <laughs> By yeah, something <laughs> other than us. All right. So... Um, don't really have much of a format here uh, or how we're going to do this. So we're just going to kind of start jumping, uh, jumping in and throwing out names of stuff we've watched and, uh, and give our, our take on it. Uh, I do want to say it's, it's been like over 40 years. I, I did check on Jaws 3D and it's only just partially digested in the Sarlacc pit. Yeah. It's, it's going gonna to take, it may take over a thousand <laughs> it's still years. Going. Just that. It was quite a bit <laughs> of gristle on that one. The crowd. <laughs> <laughs> there was no nutritional value whatsoever there. Yeah, that would be interesting but... to really go in and actually figure out what is the worst movie I've <laughs> what ever is seen. Still in... <laughs> right. It's just three. Jaws 3D would be right on that list. That but would easily be Jaws top, top three or five. Oh, but there's oh, Jaws that's so close. Four. But Jaws 3 just had its yeah. own unique. 3D just made it, kind of pushed it over the edge, you know, for just being pathetically bad and why it's a why they didn't come up with the idea to impale the shark on the mast in the 3d movie <laughs> yeah. is beyond me like it just shows you how ill-conceived everything to do with it was exactly. like, let's do a 3d movie and the big scene is it like at three miles an hour breaking glass <laughs> And then we'll do a fourth one that's not 3D, and it jumps in, into the camera, and the ship comes in, and they collide, and then the shark <laughs> spitting blood. But we'll just do that normal. It's yeah, we'll just we'll do any 3D effect on that. In, in just normal. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Uh, oh, that's that's a great movie. Great movie. We need to edit the end of that with with just McClunky. Right at the. I'm having an idea for a new series of shorts. Like, just McClunky. how can McClunky improve a script? Right. <laughs> just go back to find classic movies. How can McClunky improve this scene? McClunky that's definitely got to be right up there. That's right. <laughs> Jaws, even you know, McClunky. You know, that would be a much better than smile, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I was going to say, McClunky. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, oh, <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. Uh, All right, so anyway, back to our premise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just throwing out some some quick <laughs> Cloud Cities rank or pit, or does it go in carbon freeze where we ignore it and kind of never visit again <laughs> or into right. the Sarlacc? Pretend it never happened. All yeah, right. the rancor at least gets to chew on some things, you know. There's some positives gets to, to that. Play he with deserves his food. Yep. something. Yeah, he gets to. Yeah. If you're gonna make content like ours, probably goes to the rancor <laughs> right. most of the time. Ours would be rancor stuff <laughs> but at least week. we're feeding the rancor. We're keeping it alive. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, what do we want to start out with here? Yeah, you we want to start with a TV we'll show, movie, and we may be overlapping okay. each other here because we've, we've probably seen some of the same shows. So, we'll, okay. Well, we'll um, as we go. I'm looking here. Uh, these are all ones I don't off. think you've seen. Okay. You think do you have some that you think I haven't seen? Um, yeah, I think I got a couple on there. Okay, well, I'm going to start with the, the main one that I'm going to put in Cloud City. You know, this is a really, really surprised to put it there. Mm -hmm. Is the new season of Picard, and okay. I know you haven't seen it. So if you have something no. that you think I haven't seen, you can follow up yeah. with that. But um, I've, seen, yeah, I've seen the first two seasons, this, but not the third season. Right. I, I got to be honest, I didn't watch all the second season. <laughs> it was like a time travel story. Uh -huh. And uh, he was looking for Guinan or something in San Francisco. And I just couldn't. I, I just couldn't anymore. Uh, the, the first season was not very good or memorable. I didn't hate it, but it was just not. Yeah. It just it was, seemed completely like that it should have been a totally different character. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it was it was not worth it. The second one, definite carbon freeze. It might even throw some episodes to the Sarlacc, but it was probably an improvement, but I just couldn't take it anymore. This I liked it. I did actually think that <clears throat> season two was an improvement. Okay. I'll go with you on that. But uh, season three, I heard they brought Riker back. And so uh, I didn't know anything about it. So I thought I'm going to watch it again and see. And to my amazement, uh, it almost feels like a completely, totally different show. Like this is the one they should have done in the first place. Um, the writing feels different. The characters feel different. Yes, there's still some issues and some things that you'd probably associate with modern Trek. There's a lot more. Um, Sometimes there's just ridiculous explosions and, and, you know, (laughs) and at one point, another captain in Starfleet refers to Riker and Picard as cowboys who did things their own way back in the Uh, day. And it's like, no, not so much. You know, I just don't see them that way. Um, (laughs) But it but it has it actually has some humor based on the characters that lands pretty well. Um, mm-hmm. which is hard, hard to do in Star Trek yeah. anymore. Oh, it's yeah. It's almost yeah. humorless most of the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I just love the characters. And for once, I felt like the characters are actually back. This is actually them. Even the cameos in the first season of Riker and Troy, it was, a, you know, it was one of my favorite episodes. Mm-hmm. But, um, and it was pretty cool. But this feels like they're, the actual characters are back. Their relationships are back. They explore how they kind of, sit with each other over they let allow them to have conversations um all the cast is older and kind of like if gundark was here she would like that about it they give them camera time and close-ups and don't shy away from the fact they don't try to make them look younger you know right they, they let them be old and uh and they and they show that older people can still do things <laughs> you know yeah. but yeah. they also don't have picard doing karate or anything it's not unbelievable Riker, yeah it's not crazy yeah, Riker's stuff. still not Riker's still not swinging his leg over the chair like he used yeah. to you know <laughs> sit down <laughs> being all cocky he doesn't do that anymore right. um and uh so it's not over yet it's and, uh, and uh, i don't think the story is going to be very good all said and done as far as like if you're looking for a plot that really hangs together with no plot holes but it's not so much about that it's like a reunion tour bringing characters in um they've brought some really unexpected ones in that had some really emotional moments for me uh Mm. because i was a huge uh next generation deep space nine uh fan back in the day yeah Um, and they bring characters from both of those franchises especially and they mention i think they're building up to bringing some others in uh, for the very end but i'm not sure uh But anyway, it feels like Picard is Picard for the most part. They still have to have him. He's put in a position where he used to be the answer man and the yeah. commander, and he had to be stoic, and he had to. Um, in this, he's a lot more still flailing around. Um, they, he's still a lot of people question him, but but it's all part of the dynamic uh, that's a lot more human in this show where nobody really has the answers. They're trying to figure it out, and they're – um, and they're still there where they have the meetings and they figure out the best course of action together, but there's a lot more conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people may not like that. I like it personally. I, I thought these are old friends. They have permission to really go off on each other if they yeah, want. You, yeah. know, you can't go off on your old friends and just yeah. really let your emotions out and argue with them. Right. Who you can't can with anybody. Yeah. Right. So um, there's there's a lot of tension sometimes between the characters, but it's just I think it's all in good fun. And there's mm-hmm. you you know at the end of the day these characters have been through so much together. So far they haven't like done a major turn on any of them, or once a villain or something. Anyway, um, I won't go into any spoilers or anything, but I was shocked. I was I thought I was never going to see any modern Star Trek again that I liked, yeah. except for parts of uh, uh, Strange New Worlds. Strange New Worlds, yeah, right. And that's mostly I just liked the casting on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, I got I got to say Cloud City okay. Picard. Cloud City Picard season, season three. 3. All right. Call, okay. Color color me amazed that I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah. And it's not over yet. It may uh McClunky right at the end. <laughs> 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 Probably will, but but the journey's been good so far. All right. Very good. Okay. Well, I'll throw it out one. It feels good to recommend a Star Trek for once instead it, of right. us. Yeah, we lost the, our enthusiasm. Discovery really killed have. our enthusiasm yeah, for the franchise. Discovery just kind of took the wind out of the, all yeah, the sails. Yeah, it just slowly strangled us. <laughs> or clunkied us. Exactly. What you got? All right. I've got a Cloud City, and I believe awesome. you have seen this because I think we've talked about it. The Old Man. Starring oh, Jeff Bridges. yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Excellent I left show. this off my list for some reason. Yeah. So far, it's only got one season. Uh, hopefully they're coming out with season two soon because I think season one ended I think last summer Um, but yeah I really enjoyed this show Uh, he's basically an ex-CIA agent 
uh, retired and he's, you know, he's basically getting sucked back into the business as it were. Um, but it's got a lot of, again, I don't want to give a whole lot of spoilers on some of these shows in case people aren't watching it, you know, or people haven't seen this stuff. I'm trying to stay away from some of the big spoilery stuff, but I, you know, cause well, this is obviously we're just recommending shows or not recommending shows versus telling you all about them, discussing right. them. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I would say the old man is really good. Um, got, it's got, you know, a great cast. I mean, all I do is say two names and you get my point. That's Jeff Bridges and John Lithgow. And, right. uh, that's just, they're phenomenal. <laughs> right. You know, you put them against each other and it's, it's just such a great show. Um, and that's kind of, kind of the same thing, like you were saying about Picard season three, you know, they don't have him doing ridiculous stuff, you know, he's no. CIA, but, and obviously Jeff Bridges is, is up there in age now, but they don't have him out there. It's believable the way they, the situations they put him in. I mean, to yes. a point, it's Hollywood believable, you know? Yes. Yeah. It's not like over the top. Like, like you said, he's not out it's, doing like, it's more about, and, yeah. it's more about the fact that he's got incredible experience and has seen everything. Right. And they're putting people up against him who underestimate him based on his age and don't exactly. really know like, what he's, oh, he's just some old, of. washed up man. Right. Yeah, we can take Which people out. do every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's believable. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, so anyway, so yeah, I highly recommend um, The Old Man. That's on, I believe it's Hulu. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think okay. it's a Hulu original. Yeah. And uh, and to get back to Picard Season 3, that's Paramount Plus. The Paramount okay. Plus show. So yeah. So yeah, so yeah. definitely Cloud City on The Old Man. Um, I would I would put Old Man in the Cloud City as well, not as enthusiastically as you, because I felt mm-hmm. like um, the plot kind of kind of lost its way a little bit towards the end, and it the ending didn't feel like an ending. Um, yeah, so, that, no, I do have a problem with that. You're right. The, again, I'm not saying kinda, what it was, but it just kind of felt yeah. sort of like, oh, that's it, you know? Yeah, but but every moment that Lithgow and Bridges were on screen was was awesome. They also had a good actor. I don't know his name playing the young version of the old man oh um, yeah and that was, was that was good as yeah, well he was fantastic um, yeah all the all the side characters the the woman and i forget all the characters names but they mm-hmm. were all good yeah it's been but lithgow i felt like it. i felt like that series was almost his almost his vehicle unexpected like he almost mm-hmm. stole it you know yeah uh, I he agree. was so yeah. good in everything every scene he did mm-hmm. um it's kind of like uh every time you have a show based on this kind of fugitive premise you have to have someone believable in both roles, the the right. one breaking the rules and the one trying to enforce the and rules, trying to capture uh, him. Yeah, Tommy Lee Jones mm-hmm. and the Fugitive, you know, wouldn't yeah. have been half the movie without him. Without and him, it allowed exactly. Harrison Ford to just be, you know, this character, uh, and that's kind of what Lithgow does in in the, the old man. It's yeah, the yeah. other half of the equation that makes it that sells it. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. You, you bring up a good point about the the finale. Uh, you know, I watched the finale, forgetting that it was the finale. Right, I thought I was looking for the next episode. And then as it well. got it over, and the next week I went back to like, well, where's this? Should be the finale. Yeah, I did I was like, the same thing. But that yeah. was it. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, that was the season finale. Was okay. like, <laughs> yeah, it was very <laughs> sort of again, not to take away from the show, but that was that was the only real disappointing thing I can come up with. It's kind of like this is the, the generation gap of you know it's the old man, so he's expecting snail mail. <laughs> you know, yeah. we're expecting you know to get things faster than that. He's right, like, I exactly. have to wait four to six weeks for this ending to arrive. <laughs> right, and we're um, expecting prime no overnight delivery. Deal. Yeah, same day yeah. delivery. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, I'm gonna go with another Paramount Plus, uh, and this will be quick. This is I give this the highest cloud city I possibly can. Okay. It's the top spire. Okay, the series Evil. Uh, and ah, I've talked about it on the Kansas Club before, but yeah. I'm doing this as kind of an overall summary of recent things. Evil got renewed. The last time I talked about it, it was in question um, mm-hmm. for season three, I believe, yeah. three or four. And it got renewed, so it's going to come back, which is awesome news for me. This show, um, the quality doesn't flag. Uh, it's only like two seasons long. Every single episode just about is, is good. Some are terrific. Uh, it has its own universe that it builds. Um, it has tremendous villains mm-hmm. <laughs> just just uh, and the show is evil <laughs> the title is absolutely <laughs> correct it's accurate okay. and, uh, yeah but uh, as long as you are not overly sensitive it, it it sometimes could be too much for people with conservative beliefs probably but mm-hmm. really it, it tries to kind of still respect that while still having kind of malicious fun with all the things that people believe in the superstitions uh you know the fears everything yeah. and kind of makes fun of the whole global illuminati thing as well it's just right a, right you have, to, you have to take it with a grain of salt um and it has some standout performances uh from uh from some really good side uh actors in there i, I won't go into it right here but cloud city for evil it's on paramount plus 
watch it, watch it, watch it. If you haven't watched it, if you like this kind of thing at all, like X Files, Fringe, uh, mm-hmm. the old show Millennium, um, combined with I'm not sure what, like a uh, a procedural or something, um, but so well written, you will enjoy it if you have a dark sense of humor and you can you can handle that dark side of the show. Yeah, it gets pretty dark. The second season was streaming only, so they're able to curse. They're able. Oh, to get, right, get, right. It's not to, wasn't tied you know, to a network. Remember so people, away with whatever. Yeah. yeah, they could do anything they want, and they did. <laughs> nice, <laughs> and it's good. So, Very yeah. cool. Okay, I'll check next? that one out. Very nice. All right. Um, so next, I'm going to jump in with one that is still currently going, uh, and that's one that we're both watching: The Last of Us. Based on, of course, the video game series. Uh, everybody knows about the show. It's on HBO. It's all the rage right now. Pedro Pascal, etc. Uh, I, I give it two thumbs up. I like it. I put it in Cloud City so far. I'm I'm not done with the show yet. I'm about five episodes through. Um, but so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. I was very hesitant to jump in at first because I just got done with 11 seasons of Walking Dead. <laughs> and <I> just, the <laughs> right. last thing I wanted to do was no jump zombies, into another, another zombie post-apocalyptic <laughs> yeah. uh, thing all over again. But I had enough reassurances from friends like Greedo and and uh, and people that I know that watch it that said, no, 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 no. It's, it's worth watching. It's worth checking out. So glad I did. It's very, very good. Definitely, definitely recommended. I put that in the cloud city as well. I didn't, I didn't, I forgot to put that on my list, mm-hmm. I guess, cause it was so obvious or something, but right. Something um, you're currently watching. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I finished it. Oh, you uh, finished, finished it the first yeah, season. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. And, um, um, yeah, the, there was one element of the show that put me off in the very beginning, but it grew on me and they, and they did a great job of writing the characters and kind of having them grow on you. So if there was a character you, found abrasive or didn't like at the beginning if you kept watching yeah, i think they did a good out, job of it, showing it got better all yeah. sides of the characters and um just a high quality show very high quality show yeah very much and so. yeah ha- and you have an episode where i don't know if you've seen it yet where Pedro pascal has a monologue that's absolutely freaking awesome oh, okay. <laughs> and it makes you wish <laughs> the mandalorian would let him take that helmet off all right um, <clears throat> okay so that's on hbo we yep, both give that cloud HBO city show. but that's both, both cloud cities on that one uh, I'm going to go with a Netflix series called Kunk on Earth. <laughs> and okay. uh, this is, uh, I'm trying to cover a lot of different genres, and this is a mockumentary. Sure. So okay. it has all the elements of a documentary, but it's, you know, it, it has real information. It, it covers the history of the world from a history of civilization from beginnings all the way to current times. And, okay. but it's basically a vehicle for a comedian, a British comedian. Uh, female comedian yeah, yeah um and her style which it's very much like a lot of other mockumentaries and like the office where she's the person who's not in on the joke <laughs> and so right, right. you're laughing at her <laughs> much more <laughs> than laughing with her and uh I'll, I'll be honest um it's not top spire cloud city it's good though it's a good mm. watch there are some parts that i thought just are not funny but I, maybe it's because the they had to make so much content or something to make the episodes. I don't know mm-hmm. um, where they just left everything in, or maybe she just didn't have anything funny to say about certain periods of history. <laughs> but uh, parts of it kind of flail about for a few minutes, like you're going, "Ah, this is losing its charm." And uh, um, I, I will say, another person in my household absolutely hates it. <laughs> <laughs> when I watch it, <laughs> so your mileage may vary. But Kung yeah. on Earth, I like I like a good mockumentary, and it's British. Yeah, it's too. Monty it's Monty Python inspired, and nice. there's nothing funnier in history. So, no. uh, and and nothing more interesting. So I I give it a Cloud City with reservations. Okay, they, uh, the the kind of slow parts or the non funny parts, if you just keep on, it gets funny again. It's it's not like it's a total disaster on the back. Right. Part. Okay. Excellent. All right, so cool. So, Cloud City for Kunk on Earth on well, Netflix, yeah. On oh, no, Netflix got it. Okay, all right. I'm going to jump in with a comedy myself. Um, uh, it took me a while to get around to watching this show as well, but I've now gotten through the point where I'm actually caught up. It's a show that's still making new episodes, and that's Young Sheldon. Uh, obviously, this, really? is a, this is an offshoot of <laughs> you know, this is a spinoff of The Big Bang Theory, based on when uh, you know seriously? Sheldon Cooper was a young man growing up in in Texas. So, um, because I, 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 you know, I always I'm gonna, big I'm gonna have to throw a flag <laughs> on the flag. No, I'm kidding. I'm just shocked. Go ahead. So, yeah, obviously, I, I love Big Bang Theory. I watched it back in the day when it originally came on for about the first five or so seasons, and then somehow I got out of the habit of watching it. And I didn't watch it anymore. 
Um, not because I didn't like it or it fell out of favor with me. I just, I just got busy and just for some reason just fell out of my rotation. Um, so now just earlier, basically end of last year, beginning of this year, I went back and watched the entire show from beginning to end. Uh, oh, really? loved it. Okay. Absolutely loved the whole thing again, uh, just as much, if not more than I did the first time. So that led me into Young Shaw. I was like, ah, let me give it a shot. Even though I, I had seen previews over the years and I was like, eh, it really doesn't look very funny. You know, it really doesn't look very good. So I watched it. And keep in mind, this is not even a pale shadow of Big Bang Theory. I'm not trying to say it is. Uh, I do like it. And I'm going to give it kind of like what Greedo just said about the last show. I'm going to give it Cloud City with reservations. Sure. Uh, you kind of have to really be invested in the character to get if, you, if you're not. <laughs> if you don't like Big Bang Theory, this is not the show for you. Right. Um because to me, the the whole attraction to it is that tie to Big Bang Theory. Uh, Jim Parsons still doing, you know, voiceovers and stuff as, as though he's talking about like his life when he was a kid. And then you see the scenes that he talks about uh, just his he provides the narration. He's not actually he doesn't appear in the show. He's just he provides narration. Um, oh, I didn't know. That. So he's still getting a check with that show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. And they have different cameos here and there. So keep an eye out. They're really, really cool. Um, but like I said, the show when it originally started, I was like, oh, this isn't very good at all. But like most comedies, especially sitcoms, it it takes a while to get its footing, you know. So I'd say that by the middle of season two, it's 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 doing a lot better. It's, the jokes are working better. You start to learn the characters better by then. So uh, the show works better from I think mid midpoint of season two, which tends to, for me anyway tends to be the the that demarcation point for sitcoms it's like the first I always give that first season with a grain of salt because the, the writers are still figuring out the material and figuring yeah. out the characters the actors are still figuring out the characters by by the middle of season two they're they're usually rolling with it you know the office is a great example there you know i think that you know the office is a show that i absolutely love to this day but first season ooh, that's a little difficult <laughs> to get through you know until they made a few changes right. of, it, it, the way the right the way they were writing certain characters but um Anyway, so I would just say Young Sheldon, uh, still still ongoing. It's on. Uh, it's a CBS show, so it's on Paramount Plus. Um, but yeah, check it out if you're interested. If you're a Big Bang fan, if, if you've been hesitant, I say give it a shot. Awesome. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to mention uh, Apple Plus now. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay. A show that I don't think you've seen yet. I think we've talked mm -hmm. about it called Shrinking. No, I may have mentioned it in a recent Cantina okay. Club discussion. I don't remember. Yeah, you mentioned it. But um, it's a show about uh, uh, therapists and psychoanalysts, mm -hmm. and um, they they all kind of have a practice together. And um, there's three of them, and they're the main characters. And uh, the selling point for me is Harrison Ford is one of the of therapists. course, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I believe this was his first. It's definitely his first comedic TV show. Yeah. 1923 was another one that it was his first TV show, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the revelation for me is that Harrison Ford has such great comedic timing, and um, he really steals every scene he's in. Um, they use kind of what you'd expect about Harrison Ford and kind of like almost a parody of his real life character and some elements mm -hmm. of his character. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, and I think this character actually comes off as much more intimidating than his character in 1923. who was supposed to be intimidating, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's a, it's a good comedy. It's so heartfelt that it's cheesy. Uh, I put it in cloud city, but um, it may not be for everyone because it reminded me of if anybody ever saw the unicorn, I think it was on CBS, um, which had a great cast, but was written so much with its heart. So on its sleeve, so obviously that you kind of have to be just ready for smaltiness at any moment. And yeah. um, this show is a little bit like that. Um, it's a little bit goes into a little bit more adult themes and stuff because it's on Apple plus and they're able to do that, but it always kind of goes back to having this, almost saccharine kind of heart to it so mm. um so in a way if that's you know it's another thing none of these are for everyone but if you sure. like that kind of humor and you can kind of uh, just enjoy the characters and not expect super heavy drama um and the the style of humors uh, it has one of the guys from how i met your mother is the main character and it's kind of that real obvious style of humor that's kind of filtered through from a lot of the stuff we've been through over the last 20 years in comedy you know and it's pretty obvious stuff. So <laughs> to me anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I still enjoy yeah. it. And um, I'm I'm giving it 
uh, the Cloud City that's shrinking on uh, Apple Plus, and okay. mostly for Harrison Ford, but the rest yeah. of it's worth watching. It grows. Yeah, on I'm definitely going to get to that very soon. Okay, all right. I'm going to jump into another Cloud City, uh, a Netflix show that just finally finished. It's been around since about 2015, and that's Peaky Blinders. Awesome. Uh, okay. Love that yeah. show. Fantastic. Um, it's basically, if you don't know, it's about street gangs in the uh, post World War One Birmingham, England area, uh, and it's really, really phenomenal. Uh, great cast, uh, excellent storytelling. Uh, I just highly recommend. Production highly, value is crazy. Yeah, production value is crazy good. Um, yeah, there's really not much I can I can say bad about that show. I really the only thing bad about it, I'll say I'll say about the show is they only had six episodes per season, and it took them forever to put out a season. So yeah, uh, sometimes you'd have to wait two and two and a half years in between seasons occasionally. It's like a BBC series where they yeah, don't they, right. yeah, they just do it's almost like they a movie. You know, do it when they do movie. it. Yeah, and but yeah. quality wise, yeah, it's like you're watching a movie. Yeah, I also I also would recommend that shows. I think anybody who it was one for me that I tried to watch based on recommendations years ago mm -hmm. and could never quite get locked in to. Oh, OK, uh, I think a lot of it was the accents and not mm -hmm. being able to understand half the dialogue. Right. Um, the, the show, it, it helps if you will use subtitles with this. <laughs> yeah, I have to use subtitles. Yeah, because they, they, yeah. they, they, like, yeah, it's it's a good point you're bringing up because yes. it's a show made in England. There's like England. a language barrier. They're, they're yeah. not trying to ang you know, anglicize it necessarily no. or, or make it for an American audience. They're making it for British audiences. So and they're they have using some their local the... slang and colloquialisms right. and, and we'll be like, what? <laughs> and it's slang and colloquialisms from the 20s and 30s. Right, you know, in the 1920s. Also. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with a, with heavy accents that they don't try to do right. anything about. So, yeah, um, the context is your friend. <laughs> a yeah. show like that, <laughs> or you can figure out by context a lot of what's going on. By the right, there's some relationships in that show that took me a long time to figure out who was you know related exactly to who because yeah. of how complicated it got and because of how sometimes parts would move fast in the mm -hmm. language but it's a terrific show it really is yeah. especially if you like crime drama it's right and uh, the um, lead actor Cillian Murphy heavy drama. Just, he's pretty much good in everything he's one of those he was guys. born like, for that part though that's yeah, he really the part was born for this, part. For. this is his signature role I think mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, it's kind of like these actors that that play a good villain here and there in movies or uh, mm -hmm. a lead role once in a while but they don't break through and then they go to that right tv show yeah. that was just right just perfect clicks. for them yep. yeah mm -hmm. and uh yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah good choice. Um, that is on Netflix, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you might be able to see it elsewhere too. I don't know. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to go with another Cloud City from Apple Plus, Severance, and I believe okay. Gundark recommended this at one point uh, on our channel. I okay. watched it since then, um, waiting for a season two. I haven't heard any news about a season two or anything, but yeah, I think it's being made. Um it's a show that uh is about people separating the part of their mind at work from the rest of their mind when they're mm -hmm. off work where you basically have two different completely different personalities that have no knowledge of each other ah, so that okay. so that the person at work feels like they're at work their entire life <laughs> and the person <laughs> at home feels you know there's nothing other than their time off so um <laughs> and that's just a very very edge of it um uh, and it's an incredible puzzle thought game um cast incredibly well okay some terrific writing and character studies and it really brings you along i love a good mystery uh a good mystery box a lot of times i'm disappointed by the end um this hasn't ended yet but the revelations so far kept me interested and anyway it's a really really quality show um great concept very different you have to have some patience and some ability to think outside the box i'll say it's almost pun okay. intended yeah, yeah. but uh, uh and to just accept something different it's not for everyone but if you like those kind of concept shows and stuff it mm -hmm. and, and it has great characters that's a good one so i'm putting it pretty high on the cloud city it's only had one season on apple plus so far waiting on season two awesome yeah i've i've seen the name and i've seen some previews i've just never gotten around to watching that one i may have to check that one out too Okay, uh, well, I'll keep the theme of Cloud City going, uh, and I'll jump into another show that I just recently finished. It has completed its run, but I just got around to watching it. It's Black Sails. 
uh, which I believe you said you never actually finished it. So I guess that's I your commentary did. on it. <laughs> no, no, I, I loved I loved the beginning. Okay, yeah, but as it went along, I, I had trouble following it. Got it. Yeah, I uh, I loved it. It ran for four seasons uh, in the mid two thousand teens, like twenty fourteen to twenty eighteen, something like that. But I liked it. It's basically the story of uh, pirates, uh, not to, you know, no pun intended, pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> but it's basically pirates in the Caribbean uh, during the early uh, 18th century, um, during the the time of the uh, you know British colonial expansionism and things like that. It's uh, it's really good. It's it's definitely heavy drama. It's very it's it's a graphic uh, show. It's very very bloody and gory and what you would lots, expect lots, yeah. of, lots of language and <laughs> what you can expect sex and all kinds of nudity and everything right it's got all of that so if you yeah it's not not for kids show no <laughs> it's not it's, not, a, the, it's not your kids it's not the johnny depp pirates of the caribbean <laughs> no this is it's like a the prequel real... it's a prequel to treasure island the, the novel right. but but yep. That's where any similarities are any similarities for kids at all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, exactly. kids, let's watch the prequel to Treasure Island. No, <laughs> no, no, let's not. Don't do that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but yeah, what I do like about it is that it is based on historical accuracy to a certain level. Uh, a lot of the main characters are based on real people, historical actors who existed back mm -hmm. in the in the past. Uh, so it wasn't just a complete fictional telling of that time in history great cast too yeah. great locations really really good stuff it's compelling because you want to see what happens next with a lot of the characters because you right. get interested the, the actors are good the setting is good yep um doesn't that have the guy from game of thrones in it or is it a different guy it's a different guy isn't it he's different looks, guy yeah i like it yeah, I okay. thought it was him too at first. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was him earlier. Because <laughs> they look very similar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I remember once I saw Game of Thrones, I was like, "Isn't that the guy from Black Seals?" No, nope, it's just <laughs> nope. Similar, <laughs> similar charisma and features. Uh, <clears throat> okay, that and that was on Showtime or something originally. I think. Uh, I think so. I watched it on Hulu. So Hulu. Yeah, it might have okay. been original. No, it was a it was a Stars show. That's right. It was on Stars. Stars. Okay, yep. you got me there. Yeah, and so I guess you can watch it now on Hulu. That's very cool. Yeah. Um. All right. I'm going to go with uh, a cloud city with some reservations because I have reservations about all of this creator stuff, <laughs> but night 1923 on Paramount plus. Oh, okay. um, I don't watch that yet. Yeah. Um, I, I think <laughs> anybody who watches our channel knows that I did not go with the crowd on 1889 or whatever that show is. Yeah. 1883. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't even get the year wrong. <laughs> 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 I thought that show was terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Everything about it was just unwatchable. Your rant awful on to that, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once the girl was playing the piano while the Dutch peasants were drowning, I was like, um, she's playing a piano on the side of a river, raging river while they're drowning. <laughs> or, the river wasn't even raging, it's just no one could swim. And right. Instead of going, Nobody instead of going out, yeah. instead of exactly. going out and pulling them to safety, she's playing a dirge on the piano that happens <laughs> to be washed up on shore. I was like, yeah, we're I just don't think this happened in 1883. I don't believe it. Um, but anyway, <laughs> well, I mean, let me, let me, let me interrupt you here. Cause you had right. the best quote about this back when you did a review oh, of this before. I'm glad someone remembers. And you basically <laughs> said, that, you summed it up as basically being, um, oh gosh, now I'm going to ruin it. Cause I've, oh, uh, Taylor Swift, uh, entered, uh, <laughs> and her high school teenage, um, diary entries. <laughs> yeah. Were the, were the, it, were during the, were the, the uh, narrative parts. During Indian Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. During the Indian Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Tyler Sheridan, I think is the guy's name who did yeah. Yellowstone and now all these spinoffs. And, and they're all like the prequels to the Yellowstone. There's yeah. no question the guy's got something, you know, yeah. um, yeah people love the messaging he's putting in his stuff the way he writes characters they want to see this these types of stories he's you know he's definitely a good writer he's onto something but uh that was a big swing and a miss for me yeah and uh 1923 is more of a return to form i think it's still not as good as the best of yellowstone but it's got harrison ford mm -hmm. it's got um uh the lady playing the main female character she's a classic actress Helen Mirren, Helen Mirren, uh, who was yeah, in, she's, with Harrison Ford in Mosquito Coast, yep. and um, I still remember her uh, how hot she was in Excalibur back in the eighties <laughs> or whatever. She yeah, was playing like that, Morgan yeah. Le Fay or somebody. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, it's it redeems some of the stuff. It's still uh, a little bit like torture porn at times, and it's <laughs> tough, and it's just uh, tries so hard to be so tough and realistic, mm -hmm. and to take on issues and stuff so right in your face that um 
uh, to me, it's a fine line with a lot of these things when they go too far and they just keep on going with it. Uh, um, but it's uh, good. It's compelling enough to watch. Um, Harrison Ford's great. Um, and uh, so I put it in the cloud city with kind of on the bottom level where you okay. find Luke, Luke's hand. <laughs> 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 it's like Maz Kanata was, you know, there's 1923. Oh, there's Luke's hand. <laughs> All right. Well, since, since you brought up 1923, I'm going to do my next one is 1883, that's Plus. and that's Paramount Plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1883 will be my my next one because I have that on my list, and I have that in the Rancor Pit. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I, I didn't hate me. it. I didn't hate it as much as Greedo did, but it it's got so many issues. It really does. Overall, again, I I made it through okay. Um, but I think that ultimately just boils down to he's a little bit more picky than I am on a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, and that's not discrediting what Greedo is saying. That's more me just being a lot more apolo- you know, uh, There's easy, a lot of things easy, you easy can defend please, on the show. You know? There's a lot of yeah. things you can defend on the show. It wasn't there, by any cool means. Stuff on there. The yeah. quality was not terrible on the show. It looked right. authentic. It had Sam Elliott. Sure. You know. Yeah. A great, again, again, a great cast. Yeah. But for every Sam Elliott, there was a Faith Hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm not supposed to bash actors that was not a bash i'm just bringing up experience levels no no exactly Sam um, very so yeah so, so, so we've already talked about it but 1883 that gets my uh my first rank or pit of the show there you go yeah <laughs> but I, I've, had this, I've had that to the sarlacc it, it needs something of substance once in a while uh those are both paramount plus the tyler sheridan yes. yellowstone verse Yep. Uh, exactly. Did you watch? Did you watch all the way through uh, 1883? Yeah. Okay. See, I, I got not admit, watched 1923 yet, though. Okay, I got to admit, 1883, I did not finish. So if people okay. that people that don't want to listen to me, don't listen to me because I didn't. I didn't see all the way through. I do know what happened at the end, and I think that helped redeem it a little, just a little bit. But the just horrible fatalism of the whole show was just it was just too much for me. Mm-hmm. Um, they ha- they have a character commit suicide just for no reason at one yeah. point. And nobody right. helps her or anything. I just thought I, I wouldn't even hang out with these people. I wouldn't even try to establish <laughs> a, a ranch with these people. They're the worst people on planet Earth. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so I'm going to uh, in the Cloud City. I'm going to recommend Undone, and this is under the animation category. I have an animation category as well. This is rotoscope animation on the Amazon um, app, Amazon uh, Video. Okay. I've, and I recommended season one. It now has a season two, and it has Bob Odenkirk in it from the uh, Breaking Bad universe, but he's not playing Saul or anything. It's a totally different character. Mm-hmm. But his charm and his kind of edginess and stuff is is central to why the series works. But it's mostly the journey of his daughter um, who f- discovers this ability that might either be insanity or it might be the ability to travel through time <laughs> and, and change things and stuff like that. Uh, she can see things that other people can't see and she might, she might be mentally ill as a result of some things that he did in his past, or she might have abilities and uh, she sees her, her <clears throat> dead father appearing to her, you know, imploring her to finish his experiments and stuff. And it's done with rotoscope animation, which we haven't seen in a long, long time. You know, you might remember from eighties videos and the <laughs> Ralph Bashke Lord of the Rings and wizards and things like that. And uh, I thought that's a blast to watch that. It's very pretty to look at. And uh, good, just a good show with a lot of charm, a lot of heart, great actors, well-written uh, season one and two of Undone on Amazon. Excellent. Okay. I'm not and and the, episodes, uh, the episodes are only like 30 minutes long or something. Mm-hmm. So it's another one that you can just go right through. And, you know, you, if you if you want to take a break, the episode's only 29 minutes over from being over anyway. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's not like this hour long drama each time. And it's just it's just a charming show. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I haven't even heard of that show. I'll have to give that a look. All right, uh, I'm going to jump back on Cloud City uh, with my next one. Uh, and this one's called The Chosen. And the not Chosen. sure if you've, you've heard of this one, but it's an independent series that's been put out by Angel Studios. Uh, they It's basically, it's a, it's a retelling. It's kind of a contemporary retelling of, and I'll, I'll get to, I'll explain why I call it contemporary, a contemporary retelling of the life, of the, basically of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. And it's 
phenomenally well done. What I mean by contemporary is that it's it's not done. It's it's done like a period piece. It's not filmed like today, like like Jesus is here today. Um, it's it's done like a period piece with the Romans and all the stuff, but it's done more with kind of like language that we use today and sarcasm and the, the kind of ways that people interact to this day and age. I think it's kind of a way to kind of attract the audience, kind of uh, relate with the audience, the current audience more. Uh, but the, the interesting thing about this show is that it's entirely crowdfunded and mm -hmm. it's, it's basically the, the main guy who's in charge of putting this to get the whole production together. He's pretty much the writer, director, producer, the whole thing does is does it himself it's um he's already raised over 10 million dollars in crowdfunding for this wow. and they've already they so far they've completed three seasons the, those three seasons are out uh honestly the best i think the first season is on prime amazon prime and then seasons two and three uh you can watch on their uh their website for free there's no cost to watch uh you don't have to sign up there's no subscriptions nothing they're all there for free and uh basically there's around around 10 episodes 10 to 12 episodes per season and each episode runs anywhere from about 50 to you know an hour and five or so Mm. Um, but it's really, really well done. He said that he's shooting for seven seasons to cover the entirety of Jesus' life uh, with the way he's telling the story right now. And so far, like I said, they've got three seasons, and the and it's it, it's gotten a lot of traction. Like I said, not only is it raised over uh, you know well over ten million dollars to crowdfund this thing or to pay for this thing so far, it's even gotten uh, like the season three premiere uh, had a two episode premiere in movie theaters nationwide. Uh, they had I think uh, they've got another film that's out that's just now coming out um because they've got multiple projects going on this angel studio they that one now called the uh the only son uh which is another biblical tale as well uh but they're they're really doing well right now they're like I said getting their shows in theaters and crowdfunding like crazy and it's 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 good it, it's it's a really interesting take on on the life of jesus is so that highly, the highly uh recommended. Is uh, there's it's the movie about abraham and isaac is that that's it yeah that's the, the yeah, okay, that's, i saw the commercials the for that yeah mm -hmm. Uh, okay, very yeah, same, same very studio. interesting. I'll 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 have yeah. to check that out. So it's 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 uh it's entertaining and and worth watching beyond Absolutely. just yeah, the, any the, the way they flesh out the characters messaging or anything and give them these backstories and they just yeah it's 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 not just yeah it's not don't go into it thinking it's just this you know Christian bashing over the head like the Christian right. I mean, it's for the obviously Christians it's to the watch story of Christ Sunday it's school. the story of Christ it's gonna be <laughs> right. in there but it's but it's not just like this isn't like oh I gotta go to Sunday school and watch the show you know yeah well one of the biggest landmines landmine fields you could ever take on is any kind of biblical of especially course. Christ or yeah. <laughs> any other huge religious figure so absolutely okay cool yeah. uh the the chosen yep all right um I'm not going to go anywhere near as holy as that. <laughs> I'm going to throw into the uh, Rancor Pit. Oh, we finally got a Rancor Pit from Frida. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can tell our our channel does not dwell on the negative. Uh, no, really although don't. <laughs> I could make a list just as long oh, of sure. negative stuff. But um, this, was, this show disappointed me heavily. It's called Devil's Hour on uh, Amazon prime oh okay and it stars peter capaldi and a really good cast uh, peter capaldi was a one of the doctor who scottish actor um he was in a tremendous political comedy one of the best political comedies i've ever seen um as a tv show british tv show mm -hmm. uh played a phenomenal character there he's a great actor uh i thought he's playing like a a, a villain in this and i thought this is gonna be good you know mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no no, <laughs> no it's, it's awful <laughs> and uh, it's just no i can't recommend really anything about it it's not even it's one of those things that it has to be pretty bad for me to say oh well don't even get a sampling of this person's work from it i just didn't i just it did nothing for me whatsoever um okay. except disappoint me so the devil's hour goes to the rancor and Chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs> <laughs> it's featured heavily on Amazon Prime. If you scroll around, you'll see it. They'll try to get you to watch it. Uh, I would just say, give it a pass. There's other way, way better stuff. Yeah. Let the Rancor have his day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to uh, stay on Cloud City um, with a, another comedy. The only other comedy I've got on my list for this. And uh, Apple, Apple Plus, Apple TV, uh, Ted Lasso. And really been enjoying the show. Um, I'm sure you know what it is because it's been on every. It's, 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 it's all over like the place. It's like tailor made for you. 
It really is. Yeah. Cause I'm a huge, <laughs> I'm a huge soccer fan. I'm a, and not only a soccer fan, but my favorite league to follow is the English premier league, which is the league in which this story takes place. So uh, it's really well done. Uh, if you don't know, it's just, it's basically this, the story of an American football coach for college. He gets a job as a top tier premier league soccer coach in England. Um, and it just kind of goes from there. Yeah. Obviously it does the tropes of the, the culture shock and the, you know, the difference is, you know, a guy coming over doesn't really know much about the sport and trying to learn it with all these people who are like at the top of the game. So it's uh, but it, it's actually, uh, it's managed to, uh, to stay good for it's in their third season right now that just released, uh, I think about two, three weeks ago. I think we're three episodes into th- season three right now. Um, you're yeah. veering you're veering into very wholesome territory <laughs> but with young children <laughs> the chosen and yeah the young children the, the chosen and, yeah exactly and now ted lasso which ted lasso uh just like you said it's uh it's its own thing yeah. i think it's very cool that they allowed to make a show like that it, right it, the humor in it is reminiscent of the unicorn and the um uh whatever other show uh shrinking that i mentioned Mm -hmm. but it doesn't even go near as far you know it doesn't have (laughs) it really doesn't get any kind of risque or anything really uh it does deal with a little bit bit. it deals with some real life issues it doesn't shy away from making the characters real but they're also pretty schmaltzy and that's part of the selling point of the show there's a spirit to the show that's exhibited through the main character and what makes this trope different is the main character in most of those tropes the character struggles and goes to the lowest point is going to fail and something inspires them well he's just unflagging <laughs> right uh, he, he carries the whole thing you know like like never once do you see this guy giving up you know or anything and uh not really you know yeah. and, and so yeah, jason uh, sudeikis is phenomenal yeah it's really much more of a story about how one person can come into something and totally change everything around them just mm. by being themselves, you know, right. And the power of one person who's not, you know, a dictator or forcing people or anything, but just by being themselves and leading by example can just change everything. You know, yeah. I, I always find those stories very interesting and powerful, kind of right. like the Jesus story as well, you know, <laughs> right. one person. Right. Um, all right. Uh, so that's great. Mm-hmm. Ted Lasso uh, on that's on uh, Apple. Apple plus. Yep. Yeah, yep. T- Apple TV, whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I'm going to go with another Amazon, and it's called The Peripheral. Okay. Um, this is a sci-fi show, and I'm putting it in Cloud City conditionally because it only has one season. Um, <clears throat> this is a show that, once again, confronts the nature of reality, time travel without – it puts a totally different spin. You know, like uh, The Last of Us puts a different spin on zombies. Yeah. Uh, this puts a different spin on time travel and how – the past influences the future. Future can can somehow influence the past, although that seems impossible. Um, and uh, it's got a lot of action. Um, it's kind of like Halo meets um, uh, Avatar meets I don't know mm-hmm. uh, any any show where they get in the machine and kind of project their consciousness to different places and stuff. Right, right. Uh, but it's an interest. It's interesting. Um, uh, the premise is extremely flawed and I'm sure it wouldn't hold up to any kind of intellectual examination because, uh, but the, it starts with a puzzle, which is always a great way to hook me. I, I love puzzles and it actually delivers on a pretty decent explanation that you can get with for why the things are happening in the show. And then it brings that, um, to around to action. The action pretty much starts in episode one. And, um, so it has a good blend of intrigue, you know, mystery, some character stuff. And it never gives up on the action. You know, the action keeps coming back around. So uh, I like that kind of show. Um, mm. a, a great cast. Um, you get to see two di- two different sets of characters, some in the future and some in the past, and they're depicting totally different kinds of people. And they really nail it uh, when you're in the different environments. You believe you can believe in each you know set of circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of ended. Uh, where we need a season two to see what happens, where I can fully judge or not. But I thought it was a very promising start. I hope people watch it. Um, and uh, the the peripheral, as it's called, okay. on Amazon. I'm not, not familiar see. with that. Very nice. Okay. All right. I'm going to actually uh, take a turn into the carbon freezing chamber. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to bring up a show that's long from the past. Uh and I just finished it. It's the original two season run of Twin Peaks. And um, 
<laughs> yes, it took me 30 years to watch this show. This is your ultimate this is your ultimate verdict after 30 years is carbon freezing. It's carbon freeze. Yeah. And you just take it out of the carbon freezer to watch it in the first place. I did. Place. And I put it back. It's like I should have left it in there. It's got some freezer burn. It's definitely got some freezer burn. No, I uh so yeah. So uh, you know, back in the day, this this show ran in 1990, 1991. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched it. I, I didn't watch it. I, I watched. I know Greedo, you watched it when it first happened, and I know you really like the show. I well, religiously. I, I maybe yeah. spot watch an episode, a random episode here and there. It's a show you kind of have to watch from the beginning to really get into it, because otherwise you're not really going to know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it seems yeah, like it took you two years to while you were like, I'm on episode four. Yeah, like three months later, <laughs> I'm on episode five. <laughs> so, so I could tell it wasn't super compelling for you. Yeah, I. Um, I like I said, it was it was it was it was not what I expected. So I went into it thinking it was going to be something completely <laughs> different than it was. So for those of you who have not tested those waters and you're thinking about it, just be prepared for <laughs> it's very schmaltzy, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, it's very much done tongue in cheek with a with a nod to almost like spanish telenovelas uh the overacting mm -hmm. swooning type of over you know it's ahead of its time yeah. what's that what did you say it's ahead of its time parodying things right it was yeah, parodying was things that parodying we parody things. now regularly but weren't right. so much then yeah exactly and i didn't expect that and i didn't get it at first i was like wait is this for <laughs> real <laughs> and i was like oh okay i get what they're doing now <laughs> they're doing this well, what purpose. am i supposed to be but, failing but I, think I was like they could possibly be serious <laughs> it's like like i know because well, yeah. you know and another thing that i kind of the observation i made too is some of the it's not all just the telenovela style it's almost like a lot of that sort of hollywood <laughs> 1930s and 40s style acting you know just mm -hmm. just that yeah. real focus on the on the action the 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 close-ups of the you turn towards the, the light reaction. when you're gonna say something yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh but but agent cooper yeah exactly. and uh and yeah and you expect agent cooper when he comes up with something brilliant to like step towards the camera right the stage everybody <laughs> and uh so again it's a good show i liked it i enjoyed it um i just i'll put it in the carbon freeze because it just it was so off-putting that i just <laughs> Didn't, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't convincingly say it's a cloud city for me so yeah uh, uh yeah you know i won't go into it but all i all i'll say is you know I, it's obviously not on my list because i saw it years and years ago and saw yeah. the new one but it would be the season one would be the top of the cloud city for me and season two would be uh possibly the rancor it would definitely <laughs> be heading towards towards this uh the uh carbon With freeze Starlight, for sure. the carbon freeze yeah okay. there was a lot of things that happened to that show you know like you can always tell when a show goes through a writer's strike yeah when it yeah. just falls off the edge of the and planet there's disagreements um, behind the scenes with creativity there was disagreements in, in the mm -hmm. um the network demanded that they reveal who killed laura, laura palmer and the reason everybody tuned in every week was just to continually get teased, right, <laughs> I, don't know, get teased I don't think anybody it, yeah. really wanted to know although they everybody wanted to know and right. as soon as as soon as they revealed that the ratings just just that plummeted because yeah and yeah and that was the whole skeleton of the show was built around that and david lynch didn't want to do it and the network mm. forced them to do it um so he became much less involved in season two and so a lot of the weirdness became more of the smaltzy weirdness and less of the just weird, plain out weirdness you yeah, know yeah um th to me very few shows have ever been scarier than twin peaks to me mm -hmm. um uh as it, it weird blend of gothic horror yeah uh esoteric intrigue and like you said um soap opera <laughs> and over the top <laughs> yeah um but definitely it's got to be dated because it was hot. It was just the hot topic in 1990, whatever. And mm -hmm. there's no way the things that were hot then would be hot now. Oh, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Back on the then, was, all the magazines. And, everywhere, yeah. yeah. When she the did the, the when she twisted the, uh, about it. when Sherilyn Finn twisted the, oh, twisted the, the cherry. cherry into the yeah. Mat. yeah, it's <laughs> like that's all anybody was talking about. And, <laughs> and so I wasn't you do realize, watching the show, and I remember all that, the hubbub yeah. about that, yeah. Uh, I was like, you do realize in the show, she's supposed to be a high school girl, you know. That's she the looks other thing. 25 yeah, years like, old, but. The show is like condoning all this, like, right. like, like 30-something guys. Agent Cooper with, comes like, in and she's laying in his bed, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. It's but none of the cast you would tell. Never get away none of the today. cast would have passed for high school. You just it was like that was what no. was so fa- it was like its own fake reality, you know. But, right, right, right. But it's like you sound, said, it's like Carolyn Finn, the actress was like twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> but she's playing like a sixteen year old. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the the soundtrack to that was one of the most compelling things. I, I love the soundtrack and the care the quirky characters. Anyway, I won't go any further, but. I, I could see where you're coming from. And, uh, I, I appreciate you finally watched it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like I said, I cannot recommend the, the Showtime series, even though I super enjoyed watching it. You would just probably, I'd have to commit you <laughs> to an insane asylum if you tried to watch that. Is this the 2018 <laughs> or 2017? Yeah, the, the yeah. reboot or, or not reboot, yeah. but the sequel, prequel, whatever they did. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's just the definition of absolute and utter insanity. It, it, uh, but it's great. I, I wish they'd do another one. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, you threw me with that one. <laughs> Blast from the past. This show, I can't. Uh, the Twin Peaks. I can't even tell you how that was appointment viewing for us. It was right. Like you could. Not. I remember you. Myself. I remember you and Gundark were like really into that show when it was on. Oh, was, Agent Cooper was our hero. You that, know? Right. I mean, this I was that. the. He was up there with Captain Kirk and uh, Luke Skywalker. Uh-huh. And, but he, yeah, uh, the show and him had a massive fall from grace. So. <laughs> nice. It's a good warning story. Okay, um, might as well confront this right now. Um, I'm going to put in Cloud City Rings of Power from Amazon. Um, well, that's, we'll, we'll we'll do that one together because I have that on my list as well. Where are you putting it? You have it. Where, where did you have it? I'm putting it in Cloud City. Okay, I'm putting it in uh, Carbon Freeze. Okay, all right. Rings of Power for me and is Cloud City, and for yep. Carillion, it's carbon freeze the carbon freeze which i don't i don't disagree with you but uh i came away overly having a positive experience watching it and and i did Um, too and i I think we're going to agree on our review here you know i think we both liked a lot of a lot of it overall i liked it but there was enough that held me back that i just can't can't necessarily justify putting it in cloud city well let's just say the critics aren't wrong right you know they they go too far people with an agenda against wokeness and everything who uh, who have a problem with adaptations these mm-hmm. days where they want to shut them down because they don't yeah. feel they're loyal enough they took things too far in my opinion like yeah. there's not that much to criticize there as they do but they're not wrong either um mm-hmm. there's a lot of ham-fisted silliness there's a lot of 180 turns for the characters it's inconsistent um there's a lot of things to criticize it is it is not a great adaptation of tolkien's any of tolkien's works and i'm probably yeah. me and gundark but possibly me i might be the biggest tolkien person in our group yeah i think and, so uh, yeah. having read some really in like a hundred times or something. <laughs> yeah um but but uh it was a beautiful to look at um and uh yeah it's tremendously flawed but i still put it in the, i still put it in the cloud city the bottom regions with luke's lightsaber in hand and the <laughs> dead of knots or whatever the, the part missing parts of 3po they never recovered um <laughs> and it was it was a good swing i you know we'll see what season two holds I, I think uh parts of the story really fell off um towards the end uh they didn't quite know what to do a lot a lot of the plot twists just didn't make sense um you know in the creation of mordor and all that it's like nah, i don't think so but mm-hmm. but uh um I liked Sauron. Uh, he was a divisive character. You know, it's like a lot of people kind of made fun of the whole thing. I I, I saw the flaws in that storyline as just Sauron messing with everybody. Right, like, right. He's an immortal being. If he wants mm-hmm. to slum as a prince among men for a while, why not? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and be a bomb and like hang out in the street and steal stuff from you know get his kicks. Yeah, it's like you know it's like your college years or whatever for yeah. Sauron. <laughs> he could change shape uh, back then during that time period and do anything he wanted. So mm-hmm. um, he didn't have to be a heinous villain all at all times. He was a very charming uh, being by all accounts and fooled a lot of people. So, um, so anyway, I, I, I didn't have that big a problem with a lot of the characterizations and stuff, but cloud city for me, you have anything else to say about it? Carbon freeze for you. Uh, you yeah. Forward. Just- Carbon freeze for me. I just I enjoyed it, but I am looking forward to season two to see where they see where. I they hope go there is here. one. I, I, it yeah, seems like there's a lot of a lot of people want it to fail. When you have no, that many do. people rooting against you, it's hard to commit those resources going forward. But yeah, okay. What have you got next? All right. Um, I actually have a a movie next. Um, okay. and it's uh, Glass Onion. All right. Which, which uh, the, the the that's the second. That's the second of the uh, Knives Out. 
yeah knives out series yeah exactly okay. uh i loved it thought it was great it wasn't i didn't like it as much as i liked knives out but uh but i still enjoyed it it was it was definitely an enjoyable watch um i believe it's uh was that actually made for netflix i think it was wasn't it um it came out in theaters for two weeks oh, did it? Okay. and then it sure. and then they put it on because i remember Amazon watching it on netflix something. yeah i watched it netflix. on netflix recently so uh but i enjoyed it um it's just another in the same line as uh as knives out if you saw that it's a murder mystery type of almost like an old school agatha christie kind of yeah. you know the butler did it kind of thing you know? right right <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it was uh it was good i enjoyed it uh so i, I haven't seen it, it. Great I'm cast. Gonna, I'm one of those ensemble been meaning to check it out yeah mm-hmm I also liked the first one and thought it was when I saw it, uh, a lot of Ryan Johnson made sense finally for me. I was like, okay, yeah, this is what I he's supposed to be doing. He does what he does. Yeah. Yeah. This is what he's supposed to be doing. I thought it was probably his best movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I haven't seen the second one. I definitely will, will check it out. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'm going to throw something else. I'm going to put it in the carbon freeze, although it might belong in the Sarlacc. And I may have mentioned this in the past in our show. It's called Outer Range on Amazon. Oh, okay. And Josh Brolin vehicle um, with also a lot of younger actors in it as well. It's almost like Yellowstone meets Twilight Zone. (laughs) Yellow Zone. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's about a rancher who is under pressure about his land and stuff, just like we've kind of a familiar plot. We've seen. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that sounds like a Yellowstone, um, but, but they part of his land contains a huge mystery on the levels of like lost or something. Oh, okay. Got um, uh, that crosses into sci-fi and, and weird concepts. Um, there's a lot of selling points here. Um, uh, as far as if you like, you know, kind of a tough, josh brolin kind of thing and if you like sci-fi and you want to see these things blend in you like time travel and mysteries there's but i, I found it ultimately pointless <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and just time consuming and I, I figured out what few mysteries there was there i felt like early on and so the revelations i felt like the show was behind me you know got it um, yeah so i'm putting in the carbon freeze it was a disappointment uh, but I will watch a season two and give another chance to see where the big mystery is going and if they can. There's there's nothing terribly wrong with it. It's just not enough right, you know. Not enough okay. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I'm coming close to the end of my list here. Uh, I will go uh, back to Cloud City for. We've mentioned this already once, um, but I'm going to put Strange New Worlds, uh, which cool. is of course the uh, Star Trek prequel. Um, featuring uh, Captain Pike, uh, obviously with Spock and number one. Uh, I really enjoyed the show. I just, because I love the throwback to the old school original series style, you know, uniforms and technology mm-hmm. and things like that. So um, I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed that show. And I, I love Anson Mount. Um, I think he does a great job in pretty much anything I've seen him in. Uh, and he does a great job as well because we already got a glimpse of him in uh, Discovery as uh, as Captain Pike. And all along, we were hoping, please give us a full series of that. And they actually did. So uh, waiting, uh, uh, currently awaiting uh, season two, which from what I understand is supposed to drop uh, this summer. So uh, definitely if you're at all into Star Trek, and if you are, you probably already watched it. But <laughs> if not, if you're uh, on the fence, it's 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 way better than Discovery. At least I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, definitely. <laughs> uh, for me, it's a it's a carbon freeze right now because I felt like, I felt like there was maybe three episodes that I felt like were ultimately ones that I would possibly watch again. Um, mm-hmm. It had it had some first season blues for me, like there's things that didn't almost like writers were trying to different ideas. that didn't fit together mm-hmm. until they find a tone for the show. Um, there was one episode that I can't remember which one it was right now, but there was one episode that I thought was absolutely perfect. And the rest of the time I felt like it was feeling around, feeling its way a little bit. And there was, there was also some bad episodes. So for me, it's a carbon freeze, but I see the yeah. virtues of it and I'm, you and I are both Star Trek fans, uh, not like Star Wars, but mm-hmm. um, but we're used to Star Trek being there as a comforting presence at all times, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, with some type of show, and uh, I've I've seen the good, the bad, the mediocre, you know, in Star Trek, and so I, I they need the resurgence to some it's just solid, good writing, and remember what this is supposed to be about, and just give us it doesn't have to be spectacular; it has to be solid and mm-hmm. reliable and Star Trek, you know? Yeah. 
Um, it doesn't have to be uh, a billion dollar movie. Yeah. Um, Star Trek really wasn't that <clears throat> when it started out. Um, okay. So that's a, uh, that's a good choice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with a movie now, uh, Cloud City, Top Gun Maverick. Okay. No surprise. Everybody in the world's probably seen it. Have you, have you seen yeah, it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yep. Um, yeah, I saw it in the theater last year. I didn't see it in the theater, but I saw it uh, on a cruise ship on a big screen um, yeah. for an afternoon. And uh, I was surprised because yeah. I always kind of made fun of Top Gun, <laughs> the original. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the danger zone and the. Yeah. I, I, I always say, like, uh, you know, everybody was sad when uh, Anthony Edwards' character was killed in Top yeah. Gun, and I kind of was like, "Yeah, good, he's gone." Because <laughs> I thought he was annoying. <laughs> annoying. Like, that scene where they, <laughs> yeah, that scene where they sit in the diner and he starts doing that really obnoxious impersonation of Jerry Lee Lewis. If I was there, I just would have gone over and slammed the, the top of the piano cover down <laughs> in his hands. You know, I don't care if he's got a cute little daughter or whatever. It's like, shut up, dude. That's obnoxious. <laughs> so it's kind of one of those things where you know the eighties charm of characters can sometimes be so over the top that it's not right, for you. But right. but Top Gun Maverick to me was a Star Wars movie <laughs> in a Top Gun movie. Yeah, had, I expected Admiral Ackbar to come out at any moment. You can see here the plot of the film. <laughs> well, we need to fly down this trench. Yeah, deposit exactly. bombs precisely on this spot. And, uh, and oh, he's just thinking people's going to die. You know, it was. <laughs> uh, but uh, I will say I loved the treatment of the characters. Uh, you got emotionally invested in them. I didn't even like Top Gun. And I, and I liked this movie and the characters mm -hmm. in it all of a sudden. Like I was like. Oh yeah, I guess I did like the no, I didn't I really didn't, but but for some reason in this movie I did. You know, it's like yeah. I, I had a tear in my eye when Val Kilmer's character uh well yeah. I went to spoilers, but everybody's seen it. Yeah, but yeah. he has a cameo that was unexpected that I thought yeah. was great. That was really and, good. Um yeah, and uh uh it's just a good old fashioned action movie with very straightforward characters, very straightforward conflicts. Um, you know, it has the comedy, the action, the, the romance. Action. It has the everything. It was, just, it was a throwback to why can't we just make formula movies that are good? The, yeah. the formula is usually so apparent, so bad that you can't enjoy it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but this, you could see the formula blatantly, and it was still enjoyable. So yeah, I give it high marks. Cloud City. It was it was quite good. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go with a movie, and uh, I, I, I kind of on the fence on this between Carbon Freeze and uh, Rancor Pit. <laughs> so but i think i finally made the decision to kind of tip it into the pit <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, and that is black adam oh okay <laughs> featuring the rock of course dwayne mm. johnson adam uh, noir as it's known in france yes adam noir La Dame but, noir <laughs> so anyway <laughs> i'm not going to talk a lot about this film it was it had its moments but it was just yeah, I think here's what it here's what it boils down to for me is I've got I think I've finally really hit <laughs> some serious superhero movie fatigue over the past <laughs> couple of years. How can you, you know, not? That I'm just to the point where I'm like I'm even when I watch I'm like uh, okay you know it's like it's like had I seen it ten years ago I'd have been oh this is great you know but now it's mm -hmm. like Ugh, okay I've seen this thirty eight times already you know it's kind of like what I just said there's a formula why can't they just deliver on that formula right um. Yeah, and instead you're just fatigued by it, and like mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna make it through this, you know. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah the superhero hype train is definitely uh, overdone, and um, yeah. Top Gun didn't even have those kind of stakes. They didn't have to say no. the whole world is in right, the right. Danger. It wasn't, it wasn't the latest no, Star Trek. It was just movie. a mission. You know, the entire right. universe yeah. is going to yeah. explode. Yeah, <laughs> but it was, it was about the relationships being at stake and who would make it back and stuff. And at the end of the day, that's way more compelling. Uh, yeah. You can't. No, none of us can conceive of everybody dying at once or half the population because of a finger snap. We just can't really wrap. You know, yeah. that doesn't mean that much to us. It, it's, it's a character we care about. You know being in jeopardy that we care about uh <clears throat> all right that's cool black adam into the rank corpus <laughs> bosca, <laughs> bosca. <laughs> i uh i actually would probably put it in carbon freeze i thought it was one of the yeah was it dc yeah i thought it was one of the better dc movies mm -hmm. but uh, just because they gave the hero uh, anti-hero status and kind of a bad attitude but mm -hmm. again they had to pair him with a kid and then and then and then the magic child route yeah <laughs> the child's the child can surely thaw his ancient evil heart. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, 
I'm going to go with a documentary on Amazon called Val. And it segues. Yes, I've from seen Top that. Gun. Yeah. Yeah. Great documentary. Great documentary. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a carbon. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. A cloud <laughs> city. city on that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, amazing. Just poignant. So well done. It's narrated by Val Kilmer. It's about Val Kilmer. And it's narrated by his son speaking his father's words. And his voice is almost indistinguishable from his father's. Yeah. Which is very moving kind of thing mm-hmm. to have a setting of your of your film i won't go any further into it just watch it uh val kilmer is kind of one of those actors that i'm sure he has his following he has his moments but he's not universally loved like you know some yeah. great american actors right but right this, but this not really a tom shows, hanks in other words yeah no and he, and he was also known for being temperamental and possibly yeah. you know causing problems and stuff he, you know he's a real person mm-hmm. uh, but this documentary brings to light to me a lot of very sympathetic things about him and and uh it's just a very 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 good documentary yeah it's a very uh, high on amazon too. i'm glad you mentioned Absolutely. that i'd forgotten about that i watched that about a year ago that yeah, was really really well done um okay well i've got uh i've only got one more on my list okay um so i'm gonna finish up with this one and actually ironically i saw this movie yesterday uh so this is actually currently in theaters as of uh early april uh, 2023 uh, and this is a film called Spinning Gold and what, <laughs> what this, this is, is a biopic about someone you've probably never heard of uh, called Neil Bogart and he was the man who ran uh, Casablanca Records the still still to this day the most successful independent record label in the history of recorded history basically he um, uh, the, the, the musical acts on his roster were people that you would know from the 70s like kiss donna summer um gladys knight uh the isley brothers you know the list goes on and on eventually in the late 70s you got into like the village people and you know various things like that so basically castle records was responsible for disco (laughs) (laughs) so do with that what you will (laughs) but uh so i will definitely put this in cloud city i thought the movie was excellently well done it was also written uh and directed by his son timothy uh bogart and it it, you could you could really tell there's i mean i definitely had a couple moments with the you know the 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 watery eyes there for a moment a couple of times here and there uh because you could especially when you know that it's his own son making this film about his father because that's the other thing is this you know this is not a spoiler it's just it's a biopic um the you know the he died at 39 years old wow. and uh, back in 1982. So he basically lived, you know, lived a, a very short life, but a very busy life in that, uh, that short uh, 39 years. Uh, my only complaint, and this is my own personal thing. Uh, I am, those of you who don't know this about me, I'm a massive, massive kiss fan for my whole life since I was in third grade. I mean, look behind me, you got all the kiss stuff on the wall and the, <laughs> the like shelves of kiss stuff. Um, the only problem was the representation of the band in the film was, I don't know if I've got the words <laughs> to describe how <laughs> ridiculously clownish and stupid it looked. Um, the way they were represented, I, I, I almost want to think that they literally have a like a personal grudge to you know <laughs> right. against them. the 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 son had something about uh, yeah maybe so um, but that's the only thing is that. I just ask you, if you watch this movie, if you're not familiar with the acts, take the kiss part with a grain of salt, because I can tell you right now, I've been studying this band's history for 50 years, and they got some stuff really wrong. And it's not a kiss movie. It's a Neil Bogart movie, but kiss is obviously fairly prominently featured throughout it. But they really did a terrible job in casting it, except for Gene, <laughs> the guy for Gene, except when in costume. And keep also in mind, they didn't even get the right, they weren't able to get the rights to the makeup, so they're wearing different makeup <laughs> styles. Um, oh, no. And just Seriously? Put, yeah, the it's like a totally fictional version. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally fictional version. This is almost like something you'd see like in an old you know, 70s TV show made for TV movie, you know, right. where they had to capitalize on the kiss thing. Oh, let's put a, a band in makeup. You know? I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't throw it to the Starlight just for that 
Well, no, well, that's the thing. It's a, the film itself was great. It was really well done. It's just that one part, like, oh, come yeah. on, guys, really? You know, you had you had to go that route and just make the, it just look so clownishly stupid. And you, know, you, uh, hey, you may think they're clownishly stupid on your own, and that's fine. That's your opinion, but <laughs> I may or but, may not think that. Well, I don't. I mean, just to whoever's watching. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, but, I can relate. To yeah, yeah, people exactly. watching. <laughs> so, but yeah, just keep that part of the game and some of the history. They completely got it wrong. So, at yeah. least they're always going to tweak stuff like that in hollywood but they uh, to me it was a slap in the face of kiss because they basically took something that kiss did and put it on another artist just to not give them credit for something so right that, that was another one of my big my big problems right. but overall excellent film i highly recommend it uh spending the have, whole... have you heard uh any of the members of kiss respond to it i have not yet no okay uh, that's yeah. not because you it's, know they're it's gonna say something like, <laughs> it's literally only been out like two days ago it came out uh, I've been seeing commercials for that. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That was your last one. That yeah. was at Cloud City. Um, I really don't have anything significant to add. I had some other titles like um, these are all Cloud Cities. Mm -hmm. uh, Reacher, the Amazon series. Oh, um, phenomenal. And yes. Is, yeah. I've, I've recommended so it before, good. but they're coming out. They're they're working on season two. I think it's coming out soon. Uh, yeah. They've already finished it. They, they wrapped it up couple yeah. months ago and should so be out, it should so be out soon so yeah. that's kind of why i brought it up again because um might as well watch season one to get ready for season two yeah huge uh, it's another reason. it's an yeah and it's another kind of throwback series one thing that you know the further we go towards whatever you want to call it wokeness in mm -hmm. media there's things that push back a little and have an older style yeah. tend to get more popular too and reachers one of those things that Absolutely, there's there's it nothing fun. it's not like it's anti-woke or has a political stance no no it no, just celebrates some things that you don't see in a lot of you see other a things lot of hollywood anymore right now. yeah exactly. yeah it's like a throwback to 80s action or something yeah. um and i wanted to say in an animation uh just some recommendations cloud cities on netflix one punch man um it's either netflix or amazon this is a one season show that from like 2015 or something okay. animated show <laughs> it's just hilarious and uh it's it's right up there with a lot of the parodies of of uh of the superhero genre um mm -hmm. and the different takes on it like the boys and invincible and things like that um it's just a fun good good time uh sympathetic characters and good animation um it doesn't come across as super computer animated which is something i like in my animation um, also wanted to recommend with reservation Vox Machina, oh, God. which is the uh, voice of the machine, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, basically a parody of D and D campaign of <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It's on Amazon and it has a bunch of voice actors, well-known voice actors in it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's like based upon this campaign they do on YouTube with the, oh, you know, okay. uh, and they, they made a series out of it. So it's very raunchy and uh, just, doesn't take itself seriously it's just it's just funny um of course we said the last of us and house of the dragon uh hopefully we'll get some more house of the dragon i don't know if mm -hmm. i'm looking forward to the last of us season two or not um <laughs> i also wanted to put in the carbon freeze the chris rock special on netflix um okay not it just wasn't funny enough <laughs> for me gotcha. it was it was it was it was pretty funny but it, to me it kind of uh banked upon that whole sla Oscar slap right I'm interested to watch and I thought the whole middle part was eh, it just wasn't all that funny I thought I expected more um and um I think that's about everything that I have that I was throwing out there right now mm -hmm. I was gonna say on Netflix if you I always have to throw in a badass action movie it's not new or anything but the raid 2 is on Netflix this is one of the best action movies ever made if you like action, if you can, uh, you can watch it dubbed or subtitled, but watch it subtitled. Just get over it. Watch the subtitles already. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just enjoy the action. It's an absolutely insane uh, action movie that should be celebrated forever and ever. It took months and months and years for them to, to get the action sequences down. And it really shows it's an incredible piece of work. And that's about it. And what is it called? I didn't catch the name on that one. Uh, the Raid 2. There's oh, a, the, Raid. There's, the Raid is one of the is basically you know um the uh, judge dread movie that yeah. they did with carl urban it's basically mm -hmm. the raid remade there's a whole bunch of remakes. Oh, okay people go from the bottom of a building to the top of a building to fight yeah, like yeah, a yeah. drug dealer or something mm -hmm. yeah. that's the raid they, they they ripped off the raid for that and um um <clears throat> it's a great movie on its own uh, uh but the raid too like takes everything up a notch 
and um, just you definitely, if you any kind of any, into any kind of martial arts or action movies, um, and you don't take them too seriously, you just have fun with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the raid two is intense. It's you won't see much like that anymore. Yeah. Everything's CGI now, and too much risk involved. You know, to stunt men and actors and everything, and they really go for it <laughs> in <Yeah>. that movie. <laughs> it's a throwback. It's like I really enjoyed the the art of it. So yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. so hey, right. here we go. We got a ton of cool. cloud cities and ton of cloud cities and a few. We, uh, we feel a few of the rancor. Next time, rancor we'll, I'll have to be more and, negative. Uh, the <laughs> oh, there, uh, there was one more thing I want to say uh, sure. to top off the uh, the cloud city. Um, it was another documentary. Uh, had okay. my different categories. Um, four hours at the Capitol oh, on okay. HBO. Um, this is political as I ever get, and I'm not po- I'm not political, mm-hmm. but um, it shows a lot of footage from what happened on the January 6th Capitol building stuff. Hmm. And you can, you can draw your own conclusions. It's, it's not, I don't recommend it because as as a political piece, I recommend it as a compelling documentary and uh, to show some things that hopefully we never see again. And we don't want to see in our country again. And, uh, but it gives, it gives a voice to people, just common people in the crowd and, and common people with the Capitol police and not just dwelling on the big figures and, yeah, uh, it, it it provides a lot of a lot of interesting footage to back up everything uh, that it says. Yeah, and um, anyway, I, I I was really mesmerized by it, and uh, a very interesting watch. I think I think that kind of thing you should try to look at all sides and look at as many things as you can. This is um, more of a neutral documentary, but it definitely takes a lot of sympathy with the Capitol Police and the people who kind of underwent that. Mm-hmm. the terror of the moment uh, but yeah. it also it also you know depicts the lady who lost her life and everything and mm-hmm. it's you know sympathetic towards that as well so uh just a good a lot of good footage in there and the people that were actually there filming it and the people that experienced it so yeah. i give it a cloud city it was, and it's a tough watch like a lot of documentaries are that handle tough subjects but well worth doing um okay well that's gonna wrap it up for our cloud city rancor pit episode let us know what you think uh what are your cloud cities what are your rancor pits uh have you seen any (laughs) of these uh these these shows and do you recommend some stuff that we uh may have missed uh but anyway we'll come back at you with another episode like this sometime in the future uh after we watch a few more shows and uh we'll see you then so <laughs> these were all watched to like in a week. And subscribe and uh leave us some comments we'll see you next time thanks for joining us guys take it easy yeah, but I mentioned uh, the Val Kilmer. That was really cool. I forgot about that. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, I was surprised by that. Because I, I'm just enough of a fan to watch something like that. Yeah. And because I was curious, you know, what happened with the movie. You know, put the, yeah, the